Mr. John Stewart. Welcome to your podcast. <laughs> Me, 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 me. <laughs> a very tired person who was uh, left DC <laughs> at 8 p.m. last night. Truly, truly, guys. Uh, thanks John. for coming down, John. Thanks for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I, you know, I didn't realize that that legislating can give you a hangover. Oh uh, yeah. So it's. <laughs> Uh, drunk on democracy? Drunk on democracy, motherfucker. That must be why they don't do much of it in D.C. <sighs> oh, oh, man. They repassed the PACT Act. Repassed it. Repassed it. <laughs> it was passed. And it was passed again. And what the PACT Act did is that it provided health care for veterans who were uh, injured by the burn pits. They had burn pits in at war. It gave them cancers and other ailments. And now they're going to be covered when they go to the VA. They're going to have presumption that they're diseases were caused by their service or if you're republican it is a slush fund that we got you on gotcha we, we, 400 billion we, 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 <laughs> that's the thing you know i don't know if you guys would felt like when that gut punch happened when they turned the bill down i think that was on either wednesday night or thursday night you know everybody had gathered there in washington all the veteran service organizations all the veterans for a celebration because this bill had obviously already passed 84 to 14 and it had a red a blue slip issue, which is a, there was a small con, uh, constitutional provision about rural VA providers it had to be taken out one sentence. Uh, so they were all there. So w when when Pat Toomey stood around the desk and convinced all of his frat brothers to uh, and we'll get into what the Senate is like, but uh, when he convinced them all to just you know, hey, man, let's just take a stand here against veterans with cancer. Let's do that. <laughs> let's let's finally defeat big veteran with cancer. And, uh, you know, when that happened, people were, were devastated. And I don't like not to like overly massage the point, but like people committed suicide. Like that's real. And within the period. And because and, of because of that. That's right. Oh, man. We, we know of two instances of people that we were actively uh, trying to get help who committed suicide. Like, that's how fucking serious this was, right? But thanks for playing your games with the bill. See, that that's the point. That's why I was so mad. And because the misinformation, willful, from the right, like, I, I, I still can't understand, like, What's the point of this whole, like, it's a Schumer Green New Deal, like, and it's right there. Like, you can look it up. It's not like, we're not playing semantic games. Nothing changed from June 16th to July. So knowing the stakes of what was going on, like, you know, that's why I was so raw. That's yeah. why we were fighting so hard because when this misinformation grabs hold and and rob you might know look and i don't know if you're on like those you know net bot servers or whatever they are for military community but that real right with that hardcore right wing part of the military was yep. attacking the fuck out of everybody else all caps yeah yeah i do know some some people who are in who are very right and it's just they don't question this information when it comes in and like question it if it's coming from schumer question it and it's coming from Toomey, absolutely 100 percent every time question it to me being the senator from pennsylvania if, but if you don't know it, it was the certainty of it of no the dems inserted they switched it from mandatory and i and i kept telling people don't believe me i understand what you think of me but you don't have to take it from me. Take it from your eyeballs. Whatever connects your eyeballs to the other processing chips that go on there, read, you, you can actually go on the site and just line the two documents up. John, the whole week is like, my evidence ends in .gov. Like I'm not making, this isn't a .net or Fact .com. Check me. Like I can't tell you how many reporters write up the story of what happened and they're wrong. Yes. Just flat out wrong, wrong on substance, wrong on style, wrong on everything. And you, you like my job that whole five days was I am going to suss out every moment of misinformation that I can and try and push it back in the tube because this is making it harder for the veterans 
to yeah. get this through. It's it's obfuscating. It was doing its job. The misinformation was doing its job. And our journalists, though, they do have a purpose in society. It is to fact check the shit. That's what they do. They go out and find the stuff and they make sure it's true. I'm not. I, so, Rob, and again, look, I've been doing this a lot. I don't think that's great. I think what they're supposed to do is find out what what that means for the midterms. I, I don't oh, think you're uh, so yeah, right. To, specu to speculate. My yeah. bad. I had an old definition. Fucking Newsweek came out with a fact check on Toomey today. Okay. <laughs> okay, the bill is... The bill passed yesterday. Well done. Um, uh, we, we're going to get Tuberville uh, now. We're we gonna, got him, guys. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. So let, can we take a step back? Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think for people who don't know, they know something really good happened for veterans. It was trending on Twitter, like all of this By amazing way, not stuff. Not even really good. Like, just, just know that, like, here's how fucked up we are. Like, they still have cancer. They're still yeah. fighting these illnesses. Like, it's the perspective of, like, for a moment, you are like, yes, yeah. Chemo won't bankrupt them. Like, so in, in the perspective of, it was a day the country lived up to an obligation that it had, but their lives are still a battle. Yeah, you know, and that sure. and that's the thing. It's it's. I have no segue for what I'm about to say. Bring it, Kay. Which is, I feel so guilty for how great of a time I had yesterday, and we want to tell you about it, John. Yes. Uh, we just want to talk about everything so that happened fine. yesterday. We were we were in D.C. Yeah. with John. A group of us went down yeah. and saw it from, I want to say, beginning to end. It was clearly, it's been fighting for decades. You know, we showed up on the last day and shook hands. <laughs> and <t> <laughs> Can I tell you what was nice? So, and, I, and I honestly mean this. So, like, we're worn out. And when you are that way, like, I, I really, the reason why I switched tactics on that day was, I could tell the group was was done. Like some of the veterans were in crisis. We had to get the VA to send over crisis counselors. Like these folks have traumatic stress. They have disabilities. They have illnesses caused by the burn. And like they were fraying. They had been outside for a very long time. And when new people come and bring new energy, it allows them to go a little bit further, to dig a little bit deeper. And when Kay and Rob and Brenda and Jillian and the podcast team and everybody showed up. Robbie, Robbie and came. Robbie yeah, came yeah. And Robbie came. And it was such a lift. And what I thought was interesting is obviously down there, you know, we don't have unlimited food. And uh, to see all you guys around that food table, in some ways, <laughs> keeping others from getting there was really what for me you know i was like well you know we don't we don't actually have more i think it's i think it's only we just have that one box of burgers and to know that it was nice to see how hungry you guys were you yeah know, we which, make sure when we come down we yeah. support and we get all the yeah. pepperoni pizza that's right yeah. you gotta stay I, focused we right. can't allow you to get yeah, yeah. Well, i remember yeah. i was like oh this is a great lift but guys it's not an open bar so <laughs> if you could just for a second and let the guy in the wheelchair just have maybe some of the coleslaw. That's all. Yeah. I wasn't asking yeah. for much. Robbie did have two cups of salad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was Robbie doing? With, I look over, he's got a cup and a fork. And I'm like, do you And John Fields kind of looked at us like, be more like this guy. Like we, eat, we ate bread and he let us have it. And I'm like, bro, we're trying to get the pack deck down. I don't, yeah. I didn't come here to feel guilty. I came yeah. here for pizza. Yeah, John Feel is pure paleo. He just reaches in meat and just yes, does, it's a lot yeah. of this. Yeah. <laughs> so who? who all right, so for, we should understand that there's some inside stuff here that people may not know. For those who don't know you who won't. John Fields, can you explain? John <laughs> Feel is uh, an absolute whirling dervish of a human being. He was a ground zero uh, uh, contractor who went down there, served in the army. He's an army guy, airborne, I think, and. Uh, you know, when 9-11 when happened, he went down there to help because he was also a construction foreman. And he got hit with a beam from uh, one of the, as they were doing the demolition, and the beam landed on his foot and he lost half his foot and he went in the hospital and he was in there, almost died. Strangely enough, that incident probably saved his life because he didn't, he wasn't on that pile for the same amount of time breathing in the kinds of things that we know killed so many of the other 
first responders and construction workers and people around lower Manhattan and, and all those other folks. So in his fight to get what happened to him uh, taken care of, he started seeing these other diseases and he decided God knows where he got the willpower or the strategic uh, know it, uh, know it all. Long that's, Island. That's, you know what? Wisconsin. He's from Wisconsin. <laughs> so that's probably it. Uh, and he organized this. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trips down to Washington to get these people taken care of. And he was the guiding force behind really the momentum, the foot soldiers of getting the Zadroga Act through the uh, the Congress back in 2010. And he and I just stayed in touch with it and thinking it was over, but it was never over. And he's never been able to do it. And this will be the rest of his life, by the way, is making sure that these funds are properly administrated and all those sorts of things. But we became very close. And over these past, you know, 12 years or so, we've been we've been brothers in arms trying to do this. And, and he's just a hell of a dude. So we, we were out on the, we were, we got to DC, we were on the Capitol lawn at like 10 a.m. And uh, we were just hanging out with the veterans and hearing stories and, and it was just such an incredible time to, I mean, hearing devastating stories, but yeah. just hanging out with people who like heroes and hearing their stories. Yes. and That's right. And if, if you want to talk about energy, if you thought we brought energy, they brought us energy. When we 100%. get down there and we talk to these people, it's like right. you'll, you'll do anything for them at that point. Like I'm right. going nowhere now. And and Rosie is did you did you get to meet and talk to Rosie? Rosie Absolutely. Torres is talk about it, but she's another. She's like what John Feel was during the Zadroga Act for the burn pits. She's been at this. Yes. Her husband Leroy Torres was sickened by the burn pits. Came home, Texas State Trooper couldn't work. They fired him. They're about to lose their house. He gets suicidal. You know, it. she pulled him back from the brink and his service dog, and they decided to fight. And so they began this effort, and that's actually how John and I, John Feel and I got involved. Rosie saw what was going on with Zadroga and said, that sounds like what's happening to us. Uh -huh. Yes. She contacted Feel, he contacted me, and we were like, when and where, baby? Let's do this. And the and connection so, is yeah. that uh, in 9-11, they were breathing in some shit that was toxic, that was burning in the rubble. Right. And at the same time, our soldiers were burning shit and breathing it in. The same shit they were being told to by their superiors. Right. One one was an attack and the other was a direct order. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's fucking stupid. It's incredible how effective injustice is at creating community. <laughs> it's it, like it was just hanging out bars, on the lawn. Bars, K. Bars. It's oh, listen. Yeah, I mean, you guys did all the speeches yesterday, <laughs> uh, and there was a lot of speeches, nonstop oh, speeches. By the way, if they would cut out the speeches, you would see probably sixty to seventy percent more legislation. Washington is ten percent legislation, twenty percent cocktails and lunch. And the rest is speeches. You know these people. You talk to these people. You talk through legislation. You hear all the stuff behind the scenes. We don't know these people. Mm. So we're on the lawn, hanging out with the veterans, having a good time, electric sliding for justice, all that good stuff. Mm. Mm. Who Who's the most noteworthy senator that came over to you, Rob? Like, who's the person that you like? This is... Oh, well, the star of the show was Warnock. 100%. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Man. See, man, whenever, you... whenever those folks walk over, I don't know if you guys notice this, I walk away. Yes, we noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we still got, we're wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. All right, and all right. What we like about Warnock is that he's very different in person than he is on television when you see him. Oh, okay. I, I, I would like to say something that I, I'm re already requesting you guys to cut from this podcast. He wears buffs, John, and he ties his tie like an original king of comedy. There is no bigger dog whistle. Let, let me tell you something. Nobody looks better than Warnock. Like yeah. he walks out there and I think, cause you also see like, let's face facts. The Senate is a glorified assisted living facility. So when, <laughs> yes. you, when you bring in a Warnock, uh, when you bring in, you know, when you get a couple of guys who cut a dapper figure and you're just like, is that the lawyer who's trying to shut down the nursing home? <laughs> like, you don't know, you're trying to pick everybody's place. It's like when we were in the gallery and you walk them come up, Tell me that didn't look like one flew over the cuckoo's nest where it's just elderly people walking up to get their medicine. 
Yeah. John Ossoff is is somebody's grandson in that they're like, right. just, this is my grandbaby who came to visit me. My favorite thing about watching these votes is all the guys in their grays. You know, it's all gray and brown and, you know, ashen. So it all has this very big sort of Otto Preminger feel as they're walking up. And then Kristen Cinema walks in yes. with a Lily Pulitzer. Yeah. Yeah. And her shoes have daisies. A great look. I, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Great, Unfortunately, great we have to report that she looked great. She looked great. She comes and she spins around and she's moving two to three times faster than anybody yes. else and creating vapor trails. And all you do is you look over at like Grassley going, who's she coming to visit? Yes. And <laughs> it's the funniest fucking thing you could ever. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, so, it's such a wild place. It's all right. So, so for those who don't know, we were on the lawn. We weren't sure when the things were going to get passed. Mm -hmm. uh, know this and, though, because any because senators are coming over, that's how you know shit's starting to get resolved. Because we were down there for days, and the only people who came over were the Capitol Police, going, "Please don't put your chair there." Can you? Yeah. You know, when the senators started coming, that's when I went. We're gonna we're gonna win this. So so War Warnock came over. Yeah. Uh, 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 I mean, it was headline. We had Bush. Heinrich from New Mexico. Sure, tell yeah. me, he's a good dude. Tester, hell of a tan on this man, Heinrich. Hell of a tan. Uh, too good of a tan for a man with the last name Heinrich. I think. <laughs> How does that happen? Uh, uh, another ro writer, Robbie, said that he had big time game show host vibes. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. He does their trivia night, from what I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Kelly came, uh, and I, I think. The first time you said like senators don't come over unless they know is when Schumer came over and you were like, okay, this is he, he, they wouldn't do it. They, yeah, they, they they don't have that's not they don't come over to like check on things. They that that's just not how they work. Uh, Bernie came over and said what's up, and it started to feel like there was some optimism in the air, but we weren't sure. And regardless, like what everything John is saying is absolutely true. Like any publication that was like Republicans have already voted no, like we didn't even know. And we're kind of getting word as we go along and we find out there's a vote is going down and we figure out that we're going to go out and into the Senate, which I think for me, Robbie and Rob, we were like, this is not what I envisioned I'd be wearing the first time I'm invited inside. Yeah. I'm watching my f first vote in the gallery in a shirt that I've sweat in for nine hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> Deodorant giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take a, we we have to go inside the Capitol, but first we have to go through 30 minutes of the insurrection tour. And Boy, isn't that, when you walk through there now, it's a different vibe than, it, like you yeah. walk through certain places and you go, oh, this is where the Confederate flag guy was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is where the, like, it is. It's haunting now in a way that it wasn't when we were first doing it. And also, it's really different when you're allowed to be there. I say the vibe's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more put together, you know, when you're like welcomed in. It, let me say this. Easily 40 to 50% less tear gas. They kept no telling us to be quiet. I was like, you, you ain't say that to the... Right, right, right. Yeah, we make it, we go in, we go, we get invited in. We didn't think we were going in. We didn't know that was going to happen. This is a surprise. And yeah, yeah. again, our eyes are wide. We can't believe that we're even able to be part of this. And then they tell us they have to, we have to give up our phones. And we're like, well, maybe we don't, we don't want to go in anymore, you know, because we, <laughs> we're so addicted to our phones. But we go in, everyone's right. phones, electronics, my watch, everything is locked up. And we get put into the gallery and we're all sitting together. And, and at this point, it's like, I can only describe it as like, it's 100% pure, uncut reality. Like, the emotions are in the air. The air is thick. There's no distractions. You're with your people, and you're watching this, the work that everyone done, had done come to fruition. Yeah. That I, I, had, I felt really alive. I felt truly alive in that moment. Can I tell you, for me, because I've been there a lot, it's hard for me to turn off the TV producer brain. So for me, it's like, if you're going to put our phones in a pouch... You've got to bring some entertainment and some game. And there are certain things like the vote, would, <laughs> it, it would stir to a certain climax. And then all of a sudden there'd like be this weird seven minute lag. And I'd be like, we're going to have yeah. to cut this part. 
We're going to yeah. cut this part, and we've got to bring some finale to this. Who's the Senate warm-up guy? Where's the warm-up guy? Yes. John is just David Stern in it, so all you hear is, are y'all ready for this? <laughs> A five-foot-eight-inch sophomore <laughs> from a while. And it's just, it's just Cory Booker like, Arr. The whole time it's going on, because nobody has phones, and we're not allowed to be demonstrative. Uh, right. So all I'm doing is impressions of every senator as they walk out to the entire gallery that that we're sitting with, trying not to do it loud enough that is going to cause us an issue. We, and you did do it loud enough to cause us a few uh, issues. Yeah, we, we were silenced a few times. Let we me, had a great time. In my defense, the Bernie Sanders bit was gold, and I don't think any of you can argue that. And you got to do that at full volume. <laughs> <laughs> you can't whisper that one. You can't whisper yeah. that one. We, we were. This is just a, a point of order that goes up. We're looking up in the gallery, and Bernie Sanders. Most of the gallery is empty, and he's just wandering, clearly aimlessly. And so the whole time, I'm going, I uh, left the candy. There's a, <laughs> there's a there's a there's a hot candy. I I left it here. It was uh, they're not they're not expensive, but I I like the flavor. And I got and I'm doing the whole thing, and I'm walking. Every, ha ha, eleven, eleven. He ends up over at a desk. He reaches in. He pulls something, and what does he take out? Oh, no. I am not fucking lying. Hard candy. Oh yeah. man! Boom! Nostradamus. Yeah, that's a that's a guy you can rely on. You know what Bernie's gonna do and say? How's it going? We were very tightly packed in. Whoever created the dimensions for the Senate gallery also made Greyhound buses. Like it's, <laughs> it's same. By the way, same caliber of people. No oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're we're watching the they they go through three amendments. If if it's not the whole thing's online, uh, they go through the three amendments. They're voting yes or no, and we're we're literally just in a Senate gallery looking down on just a zoo of evil. It's like it's just you're just watching. We're just we're supposed to be quiet. We're not supposed to say anything. We can't stand. We can't talk. We can't move. Can't celebrate. Couldn't start a wave, and and we're just watching. We're just watching like. All of these, we watch Cruz walk in, which is, I mean. Did you ever have a moment, there were certain moments like when Cruz walked in where you almost felt like, so they're not going to play the Darth Vader. Bum, <laughs> bum, 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 but there, there's, there's a lot of moments where certain people walk in and I think, you know what? You motherfuckers don't necessarily deserve to work in a building this nice. Like yeah. that building is beautiful. Yeah. And it is filled with, the, the, the trappings of a democratic system that was messy, but has functioned relatively uh, unscathed for, for all these years. And some of those guys walk in and I just think like, you should be working above a Kinko's two story <laughs> building. Like you don't deserve to be here under the bus of the vice president. Like you just it's, don't deserve it. They're, they're the best, one of the best jokes I heard yesterday was that the Senate floor looks like it was designed by a Persian. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was Reza Riazi's dream. Our, pro, our producer that would be yeah, the, only th the, the only thing he would Ornate. change. Ornate, the lots of marble. Yeah, yeah, the only thing he would change if he moved in was the flags. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, one of my favorite things of the whole. So, you know, we all have that image in our head of when Toomey sank the bill. Uh the the week prior and on that and we were watching it on c-span again we were not in the gallery at that time um he's at that little front desk area and they're all coming in and he's fist bumping he's talking he's whispering and then i remember the time it was before the vote happened officially and i was watching toomey come in and it was like a west point cheating scandal like we turn our back on V. Like everybody kind of fucking turned their back on him and he was alone. And the difference was palpable. And I thought, they're angry with him. He probably sold them a bill of shit that wasn't true. And they didn't realize the hornet's nest that they had stepped. They didn't realize that people weren't going to take it that they were going to call bullshit, that they were yeah. going to raise and kick up a shit storm. And I'm sure they were going him the next few days and going, what did you do to us? 
what the fuck did you do to us? What's going, what's going on through your head? Because you were there. I think you and Rob were the first ones there. Rob got there like dumb early. We went, we stopped to get breakfast. And right. Rob's like, I think it's just me and John here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to eat breakfast when veterans are suffering. Come on, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're really trying to set me up to be canceled on YouTube. <laughs> it sucks. All right. Uh, so what's like, what's... I, we have we have the the day where you kind of we kind of know there's something rumbling to the time that we know we're going in for the vote to like when you're kind of confident li- slightly that this is going to happen to the moment that it that you see people flipping and you really know this is what's going on like you talk through like what like your how do you you experience yesterday the Tuesday I I I don't think I experienced it unfortunately uh, I think. Uh, I certainly was there. I saw the video, but I, I, I feel a tremendous amount of pressure in these situations because, uh, I feel responsible for helping them and getting them to the next thing because you know in a weird way look they're they're on the ground in the trenches feeling the effects of this i am not i am in, isolated from it insulated from it and i'm not feeling the pain they're feeling but i'm feeling the responsibility to help them get what they need so you're in I imagine in some ways it's like working in an emergency room and people are coming in and they need to be triaged. The only difference is I don't have know-how. So you're, you spend your days grinding your gears to think, how can I help this? What can I do? And it's, and there's a, I don't know, you know, you guys know me, you saw like, it's just, it's, it's a lot of walking in circles and figuring things out and trying to go and then make that play, make that play. And at a certain point, you're running just as hard as you can and as fast as you can because you're on a deadline. Like, I know these people are fraying. And I know that if we, if we go past Tuesday night, I don't know if they'll be able to hold on. And so I feel uh, an awful lot of of a a feeling of do not fuck this up for these people. The whole reason for being in this thing was let me try and diffuse the misinformation, infuse the real information, do it on their platforms so that they have to come face to face with it. We would watch you do like a Fox interview and then a second later, it would look like you were on kick return on a tree like two miles away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's like after every interview you were like i need to go pray like it, it was uh <laughs> like, wait, where's john at and it's like 100 yards away he's in the shade of a tree he has, he's like, kneeling john has a really his he has very low fuel economy his emotional fuel economy is so low that he, it takes him 30 minutes to come back and be like everybody got pizza everybody got pizza right <laughs> No, right. Cool, cool. It wasn't just my staff eating the pizza, right? <laughs> yeah. Other the veterans got pizza, right? <laughs> oh, okay. So a couple things that happened that is great. Uh, we we did hold signs at some point. Yes. Uh, we we held signs. Yeah. And one thing that you have no idea that happened is that they asked us to hold signs because the veterans that were well, they were really tired. Robbie Slovic, uh, who is not he, not a veteran, not a veteran. <laughs> I would say this: he's willowy. I think he's willowy. <laughs> if that if that would be the way to describe it, he's a he's a willowy gentleman. Yeah. He, yes, but he is also a writer on our show. Yes. And he inherited a sign from a veteran that simply said, I am a veteran. I am not a political pawn. <laughs> Pass the pact act. <laughs> and, so, and so then I got a, I get a sign. I inherit a sign. It's pretty, I have a pretty generic uh, sign. And so we're standing there in the sign and I'm like, here, Robbie down there. He's like, uh, Hey Rob. Uh, Hey, Hey buddy. Um, can you trade signs with me real quick? <laughs> there, there is at least one news publication that has a line of veterans holding signs with Robbie Slovic breaking the line, asking Rob, can we please 
Can we please trade signs? He's like, my sign is just not true. I'm not a veteran. <laughs> and then he gives me the sign. It's like, well, it's still not true because I am a political pawn. There's nothing I can do about that. Oh, but you're a veteran, though. So that right, helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the sign that Rob was originally holding was, I am a thin Jewish writer. <laughs> yeah. And it was very, it's very strange. Perfect switch. It's perfect. The and once he, switch and once he switched with me, we all felt good about it. Yeah, no, that, may, that makes sense. So when did you know, when did you feel good that it was going to go through? I mean, there are steps, right? Newsmax. No. <laughs> Fox no, News. No, no, none of that is, OAN. is when you feel good at all. Those are not the steps. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> how, how horrible is it to go on, to go on Newsmax and My go, favorite network. I, I go on Newsmax and, and I go, these guys know what they're talking about. Like it was one of those where you're like, What's going on here? Bro? Like, I would go on certain other networks and be like, you're not listening, are you? And then I would yeah. go on Newsmax and be like, this guy seems present. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. in the upside down. But so all that shit is, you're just trying to generate as much heat as you can to keep the phones going. Because what, what you're trying to do is make sure that they know that the shaming will be relentless, tenacious, and unending like you're not going away and and that that's going to translate into phone calls you're going to have to answer and emails you're going to have to answer and not from anybody from constituents from people who live in your district from people who say i voted for you what are you doing but to generate that energy you have to be really strategic and really pointed and you have to have you know, they kept saying, you know, people kept saying to us like, just keep the pressure on. And I was like, you don't understand. Like, if you don't give us a backstop, if you don't give us a vote, if you don't give us a moment to hit, I can put all the pressure I want on in the world. But it, if it's not up against something, nobody feels the squeeze. If it's just pressure in open atmosphere, then I'm just pissing in the wind. And, and Schumer's the one you need to schedule the vote. I said, if you don't give me a date and I'm serious, then everything that we're generating here dissipates into the ether and means nothing. I have to have some way to pin people because otherwise there, there's, there's no backup. So, so this is all the, the, the thought process that, that's going on here. And, you know, so, so that's all. You know, I, I sort of look at it like they're in the trenches and I provide air support. So you're wondering like, okay, well, what does the air support do and, and, and how does it go? So all that is just air support, but you don't know until the field clears if it means anything. And I was talking to Tracy, my wife on the phone, and this is before we were going in and it was as we were lining up and she said, Marsha Blackburn is on the floor because she had her amendment about community care. So I assume she's been a tough one. She's on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. Uh, and, and she's been tough. She always wants to privatize the VA and there's a lot of other stuff. So she goes, yep, she's, she's hitting the community care thing. She's hitting the community care thing. And then at the very end, she goes, oh my God. And I go, what? And she goes, she just urged everyone to pass the PACT Act. And that moment is when I thought, we're done. But, it's still all, you don't, you know, so defeating Toomey's amendment, and I knew the thresholds were 60, and, and the, the reality of it was that they weren't going to get 60 on, on any, and I almost felt bad for Rand Paul's amendment. Where, <laughs> oh, they hate Rand Paul, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, one of those, that's one of those amendments where you're like, does anyone sit with this motherfucker at lunch? Yeah, Nobody? like Rand, Rand Paul put up an amendment and we're just watching both Republicans Everybody, and Democrats. No, senators down, senators down, were pop no, locking no. their vote. They were like, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so he loses that thing. It's like one of those games that you read about in Sports Illustrated sometimes where the one coach is brought up on charges for lack of sportsmanship. You're like, <laughs> you really got to run this thing up that hard? Uh, and, and obviously... Um, so his amendment was first, Toomey's amendment was second. You know, again, as a producer, how Toomey's amendment isn't last yeah. doesn't make much sense. Uh, that's Escalate. literally like having the rose ceremony in the middle of the show. It, yeah. it, it doesn't make any sense. So they do Rand Paul, they do Toomey's, 
And I just, I only watch a few people. Like what you do is you watch Collins or you watch, you watch certain people that might, as soon as Collins went burp, I go, this thing's not even going to pass 50. So even if his threshold was 50, that thing's not passing. Uh, and the part that made me cry was when they brought up the bill and everybody went and like there was that explosion of on the floor of the Senate, hands went up. And I was like, we fucking won. And I looked over at Rosie and she was crying. And, and I thought about Wesley and I thought about his wife and, you know, yeah, it was, it was, it was. And, and that moment was, uh, Case and I were talking about it. I mean, honestly, like, thank you for even allowing us to be part of that. Uh, truly no, I don't, I, guys, I was so delighted that you were there and so thrilled that you would come to lend your support and everybody uh, appreciated it so greatly. And everybody loved meeting you guys. I mean, truly, you know, now to be fair, they had been sleeping in a field for five days. <laughs> So, so if, if really, if anybody had shown up, I think they would have been excited. Yeah. But, but you brought an energy to them that they hadn't had, and you really boosted their spirits at a time where they really needed it. You know, these are folks that pushed a boulder that no one thought would ever get over that mountain, and they did it once, and they fucking put the boulder back down. And this was their last shot, and it was their last their last little bit of grace and energy that they had in their bodies. And you guys came down and you represented for them. And I truly appreciate it because you, it made, it made a real difference. Their last little bit of grace and energy is a lot of grace and energy. <laughs> <laughs> it is more than most people have. Yeah. And it, they lifted us up. Oh, it was to be right. there around them. The energy was incredible yeah, was, to be there for that moment. Uh, it, it's I'll never forget it. As, some, as somebody who, uh, who watches, um, Frazier every night <laughs> and doesn't and doesn't inject news directly into my veins like you uh one, two questions and then we're out because I Rob's question is the most important of this whole thing all right one what happens next uh does it go to President Biden's it's, desk it goes to the desk they're signing it on Monday okay. and it's already if you go to the VA site there's already information now up about if you're a veteran who has been exposed to toxic. By the way, did you meet the fella from Camp Lejeune? Camp Lejeune, they knew there was benzene in the water in 1953 and they fucking covered it up. Yeah. And they've got cancer clusters and they've got uh, miscarriages and they've got stillbirths and they've got all kinds of shit buried under there. And this dude, in honor of his daughter, an ex-drill sergeant, and boy, when you shake his hand, do you know that? He's been fighting for 25 years and the tears in his eyes, because Lejeune is on this bill. It's not just burn pits, it's toxic exposure. And Camp Lejeune is on this bill. Yes. 70 years later. That's what it's about. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, yes. Um, <laughs> that is it's heavy. It, but it's I, heavy, John. But we, it's <laughs> heavy, can, dude. It's heavy. Yeah. It's, it's heavy. heavy. That's yeah. why I'm saying like, this shit is heavy. These people are real. Yeah. It's like Takara said, I quote this all the time from Takara. One of the most brilliant things I've ever heard just knocked me on my ass when Takara said, be careful if they call you a hero, because that means they're okay if you die. Boom. So- you worked on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Veterans worked on it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we're, we all, we've all done shows on the road. The show goes well, and you're alone in the car. Mm -hmm. and you got three hours to drive home. We were like, what is John's drive home like? Is that the fastest three-hour drive of your life? What's going on in your head during that time? Uh, so this is going to sound very, very dumb. Uh, but I was very much depleted. And <laughs> so what I did was I got on my phone and I found the Odyssey app and I listened to Jacob deGrom throwing 102 mile an hour pitches for the New York Metropolitans <laughs> with my French fries and my Coke. And I thought about nothing but why the fuck we didn't pick up Juan Soto. <laughs> 
It's nice to know that you're capable of being happy for a moment. <laughs> it's the little things. Uh, yeah. Little things. <laughs>